How you doing guys? It is the Honeydew Carpenter and today we're working on this. It is the Light and Portable Rocket Mass Heater Alumina Ceramic Fiber Core Firebox for the Rocket Mass Heater. I had this crazy idea that I would create a form that would allow me to pour it flat and fold it up looking like this. In all reality, it ended up looking like this. Even though the firebox didn't turn out exactly how I'd imagined, and I am going to have to make some changes to the final form that I use, the Illumina Ceramic Core tiles turned out awesome. The first thing that we did to prep for building the form was just measure the pieces to length, cut them, and then I wanted to make sure they had a really good square edge, so I ran them over a joiner as well. To make this form, Mrs. Honeydew and I just basically squared up the exterior form pieces, put them in place, and then just scribed a pencil line along the inside. That allowed me to know exactly where I could put the screw holes to fasten the exterior form into place. I'm really lucky I have Mrs. Honeydew as a helper because she would hold the pieces in place and I would go ahead and drill the pilot holes from underneath. And that made it real simple having a little bit of help to do that portion of the build. We went ahead and put together the interior portions of the form, as you can see, and fastened them in a similar fashion. I didn't want to spend too much time explaining in detail this form, as in all actuality, it's, there's quite a few changes that are going to be made to it, as this was the first experiment with it. But after the interior portions were put in, all we had left to do was just put the wedge dividers in. After completing the form, I just wanted to make sure we sealed it real well and put something on the wood that would act as a release agent for the cement once we poured it in. I also wanted to make sure that at all the joints, I was able to seal those real well and I just ran a bead of caulk along all of the joints to make sure that when the cement was set up, it would release quickly. I also filled some of the little holes made from knots in the plywood. In order to prep the reinforcement expanded metal, I wanted to cut it to the exact dimension so that when it set against the um, tile divider wedges in the form, that it was held up off of the bottom exactly about a half of an inch as these tiles are only going to be about 5 eighths to a maximum 3 quarters of an inch thick. I wanted the aggregate or the chips of ceramic glass that were in the mix to be no bigger than a quarter of an inch uh, nominal and so I chose to put some of it through a sieve and sieve out all the larger pieces and then crush them down a little bit. I then added it back into the mix so it had all of its stuff and prepared the cement. I added as little water as possible to get it to be fluid and plastic. I used a reciprocal saw without the blade in it as a vibrating system to get it to vibrate down through the reinforcement and have a good smooth base against my form. I found the Illumina cement with the ceramic fiber uh, reinforcement in it to be very easy to work with. It had some very unique characteristics. It looked a lot like normal Portland cement when you first started working with it, but within just a minute or so of you stopping working with it, it just turned a jet black. It's just a very interesting material. And I was very happy with how it set up. It just set up wonderfully. As soon as the alumina cement was poured in place and smoothed out, it was plenty hard to pour the air creep over the top of it. As a part of this experiment, I was going to see if I could get Portland cement in an aircrete form to bond to the alumina cement. 
and so I prepped it to pour right over the top. Now the mix I chose to use for the Aircrete was my refractory mix and it is a really kind of unique mix because it has a high amount of perlite in it and some fine sands and so it actually has a pretty good slump as far as different Aircrete mixes go. Okay, after we got this cured out for a few days, Julie with Dirt Patch Heaven came over to watch us unveil it, and I'm telling you, she was super excited. In fact, I didn't even get to wait the full seven days that I wanted to, but here's a little bit about that. Here we go. What are we unveiling? The batch box. Oh, the batch box for the rocket mass <laughs> heating system. Okay, so I poured this, uh, it's been curing out for two or three days. I poured it two or three days ago, and what it has is like a 4,000 degree refractory mix for about three quarters of an inch, and then about an inch and a quarter of aircrete refractory mix on the outside of it. And the theory is, the way I did the form is I poured it all flat, and there's a wire mesh on the back side, and once it's out, we can just fold it up, boom, boom, into its shape, into the box. So Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. Now, this whole experiment, whether it was a pass or a fail, a thumbs up or a thumbs down, hinged on whether or not the Portland cement would bond with the alumina cement. Well, you win some and you lose some. But even though they wouldn't bond together, and I don't think there's any way to get them to bond together unless you use some kind of a bonding adhesive, but it just wouldn't be feasible. That form was no longer useful to me, so I'll have to rebuild it to make just the alumina tiles. But even though part of this experiment was a failure, my goodness, those alumina tiles with the ceramic fiber core it, uh, reinforcements in it, they turned out absolutely awesome, guys. Once I got that air creed off of them and pulled the individual tiles out by themselves and put them in the configuration they're supposed to be and felt them and saw how good they turned out, my spirits were way up. I couldn't be more excited about that portion of it. So these are still usable tiles. For a fire brick, that's not terribly heavy. That is really pretty. You know? I don't know. 
dropped the heat riser last time. Uh, yeah, so why are we letting you hold this one? <laughs> And it doesn't even matter if it's a refractory bonding adhesive and if it melts out, because it all when I clamp this all together, it'll be super thin. And it'll be right in place inside the sheet metal case when I pour air creep around it. Just like I poured your original stove. Um, so I I think I might just do the burn boxes like this. Obviously, I'd get rid of this little Flip. deal. I would, that's going to have to be a little thicker. But this would set right on there and meet right at the top of the sheet metal deal. And then this is going to be the flow reducer. Now, what the flow reducer does is <clears throat> it restricts the flow out of here because I'm going to have a five inch riser. And that riser is going to want to pull more air out of here than it can. And it's going to create a negative pressure in the vortex area. And right along the top of here is going to be a channel in the air creep that's going to be covered. And it'll go up into a, the vortex. And fresh air will be able to come in through that. And it'll be preheated because it's on the top of the batch box where all the fire is. So it'll be preheated uh, fresh oxygen. So any gases that don't get completely flashed off in the burn box when they go up in the vortex area are gonna flash immediately. So even though it was a fail and didn't work out, we learned a lot and I think that this part of it is a total win. What do you think, Mel? I think you're awesome. I'm excited. Right. I. I will not do a split top anymore. The last panel will have its own bowl. This will be gone. And you're right. I'll just... This one will come out. There will only be one here. It will go up, up, and those two will come up and over. There's no reason to have a split top. The only reason I did that was for this experiment to see if I could pour it all flat and, and fold it up on itself. So you don't and I could still do that with this stuff. I, I'll pour this on this wire mesh on expanded steel and I'll just fold up fold these up. It's gonna be beautiful. And this stuff is rock hard. It's gonna be a wear surface. It's just gonna last forever. And I think if I pour it on its own mesh, um, it here I wanna show you the mesh I'm gonna pour it on. The expanded steel. Just like I did, I'm just going to omit the air creep, and I'll use this expanded mesh to pour it on. And just and then I'll just roll it up, and there it, there will be no split top, and it'll just be one box. How long does this refractory mix take to cure? Well, I wouldn't want to fire it until it was a good two weeks yeah, old. Yeah, probably doesn't shatter. Rather than have a split top. I would I wouldn't do a split top, I'll do a solid. Just have them all be one